And it's a lovely morning again this morning. Uh, glad you are able to join us as we continue our journey through the scriptures. Go away, ladybug. Somewhere else. Um, so uh, we are picking up in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1, learning about Elijah being taken into heaven. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together to Bethel. The group of prophets from Bethel came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Quiet, Elisha answered. Of course I know. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied again, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together to Jericho. Then the group of prophets from Jericho came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Quiet, he answered again. Of course I know. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to the Jordan River. But again, Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance, as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. The river divided, and the two of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, What can I do for you before I am taken away? And Elisha replied, Please let me become your rightful successor. 
You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire. It drove between them, separating them, and Elijah was carried by whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and charioteers of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his robe in two. Then Elisha picked up Elijah's cloak and returned to the bank of the Jordan River. He struck the water with the cloak and cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided, and Elisha went across. When the group of prophets from Jericho saw what happened, they exclaimed, Elisha has become Elijah's successor. And they went to meet him and bowed down before him. Sir, they said, just say the word, and fifty of your strongest men will search the wilderness for your master. Perhaps the Spirit of the Lord has left him on some mountain or in some valley. No, Elisha said, don't send them. But they kept urging him until he was embarrassed, and he finally said, All right, send them. So fifty men searched for three days, but did not find Elijah. Elisha was still at Jericho when they returned. Didn't I tell you not to go? he asked. Elisha's first miracles, beginning in 2 Kings 2, verse 19. Now the leaders of the town of Jericho visited Elisha. We have a problem, my lord, they told him. This town is located in beautiful natural surroundings, as you can see. But the water is bad, and the land is unproductive. Elisha said, bring me a new bowl with salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring that supplied the town with water and threw the salt into it. And he said, This is what the Lord says. I have made this water wholesome. It will no longer cause death or infertility. And sure enough, the water has remained wholesome ever since, just as Elisha said. Elisha left Jericho and went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, a group of boys from the town began mocking and making fun of him. Go away, you bald head, they chanted. Go away, you bald head. Elisha turned around and looked at them, and he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of them. From there, Elisha went to Mount Carmel and finally returned to Samaria. Elisha helps a poor widow, beginning in 2 Kings 4, starting verse 1. One day, the widow of one of Elisha's fellow prophets came to Elisha and cried out to him, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come, threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you, Elisha said. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, Borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting the jars aside as they are filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons brought many jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more he told her, and then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and there will be enough money left over to support you and your sons. Elisha and the woman from Shunem, beginning in 2 Kings 4, verse 8. One day, Elisha went to the town of Shunem. A wealthy woman lived there, and she invited him to eat some food. From then on, whenever he passed that way, he would stop there to eat. She said to her husband, I am sure this man who stops in from time to time is a holy man of God. Let's make a little room for him on the roof and furnish it with a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Then he will have a place to stay whenever he comes by. One day Elisha returned to Shunem, and he went up to his room to rest. He said to his servant Gehazi, 
Tell the woman I want to speak to her. When she arrived, Elisha said to Gehazi, Now tell her that we appreciate the kind concern she has shown us. Now ask her what we can do for her. Does she want me to put in a good word for her to the king or to the commander of the army? No, she replied. My family takes good care of me. Later, Elisha asked Gehazi, What do you think we can do for her? Call her back again, Elisha told him. When the Oh, I'm sorry. He suggested she doesn't have a son and her husband is an old man. Call her back again, Elisha told him. When the woman returned, Elisha said to her as she stood in the doorway, Next year about this time, you will be holding a son in your arms. No, my lord, she protested. Please don't lie to me like that, O oh man of God. But sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant. And at that time, the following year, she had a son, just as Elisha had said. One day when her child was older, he went out to visit his father, who was working with the harvesters. Suddenly he complained, My head hurts. My head hurts. His father said to one of his servants, Carry him home to his mother. So the servant took him home, and his mother held him on her lap. But around noontime, he died. She carried him up to the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and left him there. She sent a message to her husband, Send one of your servants and a donkey, so that I can hurry to the man of God and come right back. Why today? he asked. It is neither a new moon festival nor Sabbath. But she said, it's all right. So she saddled the donkey and said to the servant, hurry, don't slow down on my account unless I tell you to. As she approached the man of God at Mount Carmel, Elisha saw her in the distance. He said to Gehazi, look, the woman from Shunem is coming. Run out to meet her and ask her, is everything all right with you, with your husband and with your child? Yes, the woman told Gehazi, everything is fine. But when she came to the man of God at the mountain, she fell to the ground before him and caught hold of his feet. Gehazi began to push her away, but the man of God said, Leave her alone. Something is troubling her deeply, and the Lord has not told me what it is. Then he said, It was you, my Lord, who said, then she said, It was you, my Lord, who said I would have a son. And didn't I tell you not to raise my hopes? Then Elisha said to Gehazi, Get ready to travel. Take my staff and go. Don't talk to anyone along the way. Go quickly and lay the staff on the child's face. But the boy's mother said, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I won't go home unless you go with me. So Elisha returned with her. Gehazi hurried on ahead and laid the staff on the child's face. But nothing happened. There was no sign of life. He returned to meet Elisha and told him, The child is still dead. When Elisha arrived, the child was indeed dead, dead, lying there on the prophet's bed. He went in alone and shut the door behind him and prayed to the Lord. Then he lay down on the child's body, placing his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes on the child's eyes, and his hands on the child's hands, and the child's body began to grow warm again. Elisha got up and walked back and forth in the room a few times. Then he stretched himself out again on the child. This time the boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Then Elisha summoned Gehazi. Call the child's mother, he said. And when she came in, Elisha said, Here, take your son. She fell at his feet, overwhelmed with gratitude. Then she picked up her son and carried him downstairs. Miracles during a famine, beginning in 2 Kings 4, verse 38. Elisha now returned to Gilgal, but there was a famine in the land. One day, as the group of prophets was seated before him, he said to his servant, Put on a large kettle and make some stew for these men. One of the young men went out into the field to gather vegetables and came back with a pocket full of wild gourds. He shredded them and put them into the kettle without realizing that they were poisonous. But after the men had eaten a bite or two, they cried out, Man of God! There's poison in this stew. So they would not eat it. Elisha said, bring me some flour. Then he threw it into the kettle and said, now it is all right. Go ahead and eat. And they, and then it did not harm them. One day a man from Baal Shalisha brought the man of God a sack of fresh grain and 20 loaves of barley bread made from the first grain of his harvest. Elisha said, give it to the group of prophets so they can eat. What? His servant exclaimed, 
feed 100 people with only this? But Elisha repeated, Give it to the group of prophets so they can eat. For the Lord says there will be plenty for all. There will even be some left over. And sure enough, there was plenty for all and some left over, just as the Lord had promised. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn this morning is a beautiful old hymn, not sung it in a while. I hope you know it and can take a deep breath and sing along with me, Ivory Palaces. Here we go. My Lord has gone and so wondrous fine and earth and texture fills its fragrance reach to this heart. Let's get the last verse. It's such a great one. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Jim and Peggy. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Shirley. Well, a fish flipped for us just now. Hope everybody enjoys this lovely day. It's not supposed to be hardly as hot as yesterday. And I'll see y'all back tomorrow morning at 8.